Okay, let's watch some Netflix or something, I guess. I think Castlevania would be a good show to watch, right? You can't start off a TV Netflix show without your coffee. Now let's watch. That is better than sex. Yeah, yes, sir. Better than sex. Ah, oh, well, no, not, not, you know, just, just different, differently good. Really. But I, I, I didn't. I didn't mean. No, I do hope you sleep well tonight with my tiny icy foot shovel. Fine, oh, coming. Ah, oh, that must be the tax collector or something. Oh. Look, I know I'm tax evading, and I have a legitimate reason why I. <laughs> Wait, what's that? You're not the tax collector. What is this? What a letter? Oh my goodness. Dear Age Tour, review a game or your channel is dead. Rodolfo the Seventh, it seems. Rodolfo the Seventh? What are you exactly? Well, I guess a free toy. Let's, let me take it. You know, kind of cute. Those pointy ears and those bee little eyes. And overall, nice coat, buddy, but. What you did there was a threat. You threatened my channel, you threatened my life, buddy. And you're not the tax collector. But what game do you want me to review, huh? Tell me, what game do you want me to review? Again, you're not telling me what game, so what game do you want to see, buddy? Wait. Castle Vanilla. Judgment? What? Ah, now we know what the game is, so let's go grab it. Here it is. All right, let's review this game. H Tour Four Four One. <laughs> when you look back at video game consoles, you usually think about the games it carries. And Nintendo Wii had many amazing games. For example, Donkey Kong Country Returns, New Super Mario Bros. Wii, or even things like Smash Bros. Brawl. But what you usually forget and don't remember in any way are those awful shovelware games that are usually forgotten in the dust. They deserve to be flushed down the toilet. Castlevania Judgment is one of those games that stands in the middle ground between both, that for one reason or another is forgotten over time. It's just a distant memory in people's minds. The interesting thing is that Castlevania as a whole franchise is fairly well received and remembered fondly for its setting, theme, and innovation it brought into the gaming market. Even to this very day, we can still see its impact in games like Bloodstained and Hollow Knight, and its legacy continues forward even with things outside of gaming, like the Castlevania anime on Netflix. So why is this Castlevania title on one of arguably Nintendo's most successful consoles just forgotten, absent from the public eye? Well, to fully understand that story, we'll need to travel back a couple of years. Let's take a little detour back to the year 2007. Konami, known for releasing hits like Metal Gear Solid and Silent Hill, was on a non-stop release spree of Castlevania games. Starting from the year 2001, we were receiving a new title almost every year, either on the Game Boy Advance, Nintendo DS, or the PlayStation 2. From mainline titles to spin-offs, there was something for almost everyone to sink their teeth in and enjoy. So when lead producer of Castlevania, Koji Igarashi, was asked where the franchise was heading next, he said their focus was going to be on then-current hardware, the Nintendo Wii. Koji Igarashi states that he envisioned players using the Wiimote to whip vampires and ghouls to the depths of hell. Something like that, at least. <laughs> When you look back at this era of gaming, you could see why many publishers, like Konami, were moving towards the Nintendo Wii. First of all, it was family friendly. Family fun for everyone. Meanwhile, it also had these at the time, revolutionizing Wii motion controls, which sadly not all games executed very well. For example, 
major Miner's Majestic March, which we actually reviewed before, so check it out. That game just had awful Wii motion controls that did not pick up the input of the marching well in any way. Meanwhile, you had other games and other titles like Wii Sports or even Link's Crossbow Training that just demonstrated how beautiful Wii motion controls can be. There was one big announcement that made everyone excited but also fearful for this title. This wouldn't be your average 2D Venia game or even a 3D adventure game, but instead a fighting game. In my sincere opinion, this is one of Konami's most brilliant ideas ever. Think about it, we have Castlevania, the whole entire franchise, and within that franchise there's many different titles, many different timelines, and that of course includes many different characters that will never interact with each other in any sort. But you have a game, a fighting game, with Castlevania characters, if you truly think about it, it's like Smash Brothers, they all compete and fight against each other, it's just amazing! Like, think about it, we could use Dracula, Dracula, and we could beat up some puny little children. <laughs> like, how evil am I? <laughs> so, the other announcement, even more surprising than the last one, was that legendary Takeshi Obata, known for his designs and artwork for Death Note, <laughs> He was going to be the lead designer for this title! This announcement did not go well with fans since many people despised and hated this change since it took away the charm some of the characters originally had. Honestly, Konami's decision to hire Takeshi Obata for the character's designs is probably the game's most unique feature about it. It makes the game more emo and darker than it should be, which is honestly perfect for Castlevania. Which is why this was the driving force to purchase this item. I decided to get a Castlevania Judgment cell art. This was given out for pre-orders of the game. It's such a unique piece that I decided even to frame it. That's how much I love the art style for this game. November 2008 comes rolling around and Castlevania Judgment is officially released to the public. The game was released in the same time frame as other titles like Call of Duty World at War and Animal Crossing City Folk, so the title had lots of competition in just its first week alone. Upon the release of this game, many players actually expressed their hate and backlash towards the game, stating the character designs didn't have the same traditional feel to them, being too similar to Death Note. Though the character designs weren't the only problem with this game. Supposedly the control scheme was too wonky and unresponsive, to the point where the camera felt like it was all over the place. This was due to the motion controls. So is the game that bad as people say? You know, I really don't want to play this game anymore. It seems tragic and annoying. Wait, what? what? <laughs> I guess we'll be playing this game, but I'm not going to be like the other people, not giving this game a chance. But instead, we'll be playing it on traditional hardware, the Nintendo Wii, and from the comfort of a GameCube controller. So let's play this game, get our own decision, and see what we're working with. Castlevania Judgment Castlevania Judgment plays like your typical 3D arena fighter in the likes of Soul Calibur and Pokémon Tournament. You fight in some 3D environment, punching, knocking down your opponent until their health bar depletes to zero, or the other option, which depends on the map, you can push them off an edge. Overall, the game is pretty simple after playing for a while. You can block, throw punches, perform super attacks, which is sort of like the ultimate move in the game. But most importantly, you can perform combos and just throw the characters into the air. We mentioned this previously, but when that occurs, the camera keeps on moving too high up, and this results in the character just disappearing entirely. Mm. 
The game has a roster of around 14 unique characters, which is a decent size for a title that isn't a traditional fighting game. We have character classics like Trevor Belmont from Castlevania 3, Dracula's Castle, or you may know him from the anime on Netflix. We have other characters like Alucard from Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and also the best anime on planet Earth, Castlevania on Netflix, which I've mentioned many times now. Ah, I just love this anime so much. You guys gotta watch it if you haven't. But they even have Cornell, that wolfman from the obscure and awful N64 game, Castlevania Legacy of Darkness. At times, it feels like Konami just picked and chose many of the characters in this game, because they're all pretty bizarre and in many ways, arguably, pretty obscure. To be honest, there are many worthy characters that should have been in this game. First off, we have Kid Dracula from the spin-off title from the Game Boy, which Judgment is also a spin-off title. He could have been like a Game Watch S character like what Smash Bros. has. Secondly, we could have had another popular character. At the time, the most recent 3D action game was Castlevania Curse of Darkness on the Xbox and PS2, and in that game we had a character named Hector. Yes, we're talking about me. I'm just joking. But honestly, he could have been a pretty interesting character with interesting designs and interesting movesets, but didn't go with any of those two options. Most of the characters in the roster are locked at the beginning of the game, besides just a select few. But by completing the story mode, or the arcade mode with certain characters, you can unlock them. The system is kind of annoying and repetitive at times, but it feels so unique and it's nicely detailed. For example, you played as Alucard from Symphony of the Night, you unlock Maria from the same game, which is a nice easter egg. Besides the modes we just mentioned, there are many more as well. For example, like a survival mode where you fight waves of enemies, a castle mode where you unlock goodies like accessories for your characters, but also, amazing for the time, the ability to connect online and fight people all over the world. Though what's interesting specifically about the story mode itself is the explanation on how all the characters are entirely connected, despite being from different games and timelines. The story mode for this title begins with Galamoth. You know, that villain from Kid Dracula and Symphony of the Night? Yes, Kid Dracula! Galamoth seeks to send the Time Reaper, a powerful monster from the future, to the past so it could destroy his rival Dracula. Eon, a character that was only ever used in this game for whatever reason, is a Time Guardian, protecting the sacred timeline, and he foresees the struggle coming up ahead. So, to prevent this possible outcome, he teleports and brings all sorts of different characters together from different timelines to fight off the Time Reaper. Each character awakens into a bizarre world and is greeted by Eon, who you have to fight to learn the mechanisms of the game. But also, he promises to make your desires and dreams come true if you do the favor he requests. Every character in this game has their own reason for fighting, which makes the characters really unique and fully fledged. They could either be for personal matters that the character might be facing, or more of a worldwide scale. Though two stories and characters really stood out to me. Those are Maria Renard and Grant Dynasty. First off, we have Maria Renard, who was a character from the Castlevania game Rondo of Blood and Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Years after fighting alongside Richter Belmont to defeat Dracula, Richter just disappears. So she decides to search for him, but is teleported to the Judgment Timeline. There, she realizes that her childish appearance isn't attractive or wanted in any way, but instead pretty undesirable. All her fights are against different female characters from the Castlevania franchise, and along the way, she makes comments about their... Wait, who wrote the script? It says Funbex. Are you joking with me? Oh my god! Why, hello, sweetie pie. You'll make a nice little appetizer. Even the vampires are bigger than mine! What are you babbling about? Hm. No way am I losing to you! Yes, we are talking about that portion of the female body. You know, I didn't expect to be talking about things like this on the video, but there's a first for everything, I guess? This game is just weird at times. 
After fighting through all the different characters, she comes to the conclusion that her feeling of being unattractive will disappear with time. We all will grow old, and those things will be of less importance as time goes on. If we look at the character Maria Renard's story, we can see it's a clear portrayal of what life is at the moment. We live in a society where looks and appearances matter as big as the whole entire world, which is kind of sad. But at the end of the day, at the end of everything, what truly remains is your personality, your soul, and that is what truly matters. The following character we have is Grant Dynasty, who is the third protagonist of the title Castlevania 3, Dracula's Castle, who sadly didn't appear in any way in the Netflix anime, despite being based on his game. After the events of the game, he is torn inside and out from seeing his crush, Sypha Belnades, marry his best friend, Trevor Belmont. This caused him to not attend their wedding or even contact them years later in any way, and he still holds that pain near his heart. So when Grant is teleported to the Judgment timeline, he seeks revenge. He wants to find Trevor Belmont and show him the pain he has caused him. So in the story mode, he fights through different characters to reach the goal of fighting Trevor. Though when you do meet him, Grant has a change of heart. He sees his friend joyful happy in the relationship they have formed. So instead of coming in to destroy that, he has to let go of the rage he is holding in, and learns to let time heal his wounds. I guess this is why his character design in the game is him covered up in a ton of bandages. He needs to heal emotionally. This story is pretty relatable to many of us. We at one point or another have experienced a form of heartbreak either from your crush starting to date someone else, or a significant other just leaving your life entirely. It always seems that for one reason or another that pain is just lodged up in your heart and won't disappear or go away in any way. But what we can learn from Grant is that these experiences truly matter. They change us in many ways, and we can learn to live and learn, to forget and forgive. And at the end of the day, things do get better with time and we will have those good experiences. Wow, I didn't expect Castlevania Judgment to be such a deep and thriving game with so many details to life. Don't tell me, it's Rodolfo. Rodolfo just tends to move by himself or something. Like, look at that. He always has a message or something, he's moving. What do you need to say, buddy? Good question. Reviewing this game made me realize many different things. Castlevania Judgment is a game that is misunderstood. It's a game that deserves more love than it currently receives. When it launched, many people felt like it split too far apart from the franchise. Too unique for its own sake. If the game had launched in a different franchise instead of the popular Castlevania, the game may have received better praise. Konami hasn't released a new Castlevania game on a console since Lord of Shadows 2 in 2014. And no, we're not talking about compilations. And honestly, I wouldn't be mad if one day they decide to remaster or re-release Judgment on modern consoles. At the moment, Castlevania hasn't received any new media. The only recent thing we have received is the anime on Netflix, which again, I think you all should give it a try. It's a beautiful show, overall has a lovely message, and we need to make Konami realize that people still care about this dormant franchise. But playing it 13 years after release, I have found a new love for the game despite its flaws. So if you come across this title while game hunting, consider picking it up and giving it a chance. It's a love letter to Dracula and horror and a worthy addition to the Castlevania franchise. Rodolfo, if I may ask, what was the reason of me reviewing this game? Thank you, Rodolfo. I honestly really need to hear that. I guess we have a guest or something. Oh. Hello, may I help you, sir? 
I'm here to collect your taxes. Sorry about that, I don't have the money, sadly, in any form at the moment, but... I do have this doll. His name is Rodolfo. He's some ancient vampire, supposedly, but he's a great guy. You should get to know him. I want you to have him. He's the way. He'll help you through life. Just trust me. Yeah, well, um, have a nice day, sir. Take care of yourself and wait, bye. Wait! He is the way? He is the way? It's just a doll! Thank you all for watching this video. This project has been in the works for a while now, so it's just a relief and joy to finally be done with it. Before ending the video, I'd like to recognize a couple of people that made this possible. First off, Spitu for drawing this beautiful thumbnail. Your artwork always finds a way of adding more flair to these videos. You are always appreciated. GamerPig6, my brother, for helping me film some of the scenes in this video and for his guest appearance at the end. Consider checking him out on TikTok and YouTube. He makes LEGO content. Lastly, I'd like to thank all of you lovely viewers for sticking around. I know it's been an eternity since I released something and it's my fault. I apologize sincerely for the lack of clarity on life and the status of things, but I'd like to say that the months ahead will be amazing for this channel. So consider liking and subscribing for more content. Also, consider checking out my social media platforms to stay up to date on all future content and any updates. This is HTOR, and remember y'all, always stay dreaming.